Alrighty guys, we're back out at the pond. We're gonna do something a little bit different today. A lot different actually, but something that's not so different to the channel. Last year I put out a video, $500 wand mill camping, and I featured all my different gear that I used to use way back when I couldn't afford to have any decent gear. Well, it's decent enough, right? Which stuff, get, Walmart's not gonna be high quality. It's gonna be heavy. It's gonna be cumbersome. So the pond is actually the perfect place to try this stuff out. The only problem is the pond <laughs> doesn't have a campsite. I mean, we could park it up here somewhere in the dirt and gravel, but that's not very nice, is it? So what we need to do is make a nice spot at the base of the pond so that we can actually enjoy being around the pond. The uh, pond is just through here. Got the kayak, got the advanced trap. So as we come through here, there's a nice spot, nice little landing here, but you can see it's all overgrown over my shoulder here. All this has to go. So Mark's got a really interesting tool. The pond's looking pretty good, but still low. The water's all cleared up now, hardly any algae. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zip all this stuff out, clear it out. Owen's all ready to go, it's got shovel. Mark's all ready to go, what you got? What kind of tool is that? That is a still high powered weed eater, but with a saw blade on the end. A saw blade, nice. <laughs> so we're gonna make short work of this, hopefully. We're not gonna be able to get the roots out. We would like to get the tractor out here, but we're not sure if that's gonna happen today. Regardless, we're camping out tonight. We're gonna to make do what we got. Hopefully catch some fish maybe, cook them up, have a campfire. You gonna come back and cook some food? Maybe? Maybe, Depends Maybe. If my daughter's feeling any better. Right, yeah, come on out, have a sit. Have a campfire, we'll get all that stuff going. All right, I'm ready if you're ready. I'm ready. So after a little bit of work, it's looking a lot better. Holden's picking up all the rocks, tossing them aside, using the little three-prong rake to dig them up. But uh, there's tons and tons of rocks here. We'll never get rid of all the rocks. Ideally, we bring in some like topsoil or something, smooth it all out or some sand. So the next big thing is gonna be the roots. There's tons and tons, tons of these roots here sticking up. So we're gonna have to do something with that. We're not gonna be able to dig up these willows. They go way too deep. There's gonna be a giant root ball here, and these are always gonna come back up. So all we can do today is our best. And uh, if it's a little lumpy, it's a little lumpy. That's what we got. We got a nice view of the pond now. So we're kind of on a little bit of a peninsula as far as the pond goes. So we've got the little bay, little tiny bay here. And then of course we got uh, the kayak over here and then we can put a campfire out front. I finally saw some fish down at this end and they were two of the bigger fish. So they have not been down at this end for at least a month or more when I come around here. So. Hopefully they're spreading out because the water's way cooler now than it was a few weeks back. Time for a break and a drink. That's a ton of work, man. That sun's hot. What do you think, dude? Mm. <laughs> we're already done. Tuckered out? Yeah, mostly. Mostly tuckered out. We gotta make it sure that we can take a rake and rake it right over it without catching on anything. So we gotta cut those branches right down. So we obviously really need some dirt here. <laughs> like I said, it's not having it today. Can't get the track, the track's out actually doing a bunch of work in the fields. So at some point, hopefully we'll get like a load of sand or some of that stuff we'd pull out the other side would be perfect here. Dump it all out, smooth it all out and have a nice little actually swimming spot too. We also plan on doing some catch and cooks here. So it's not just for today, it's not just for camping. So we can do any kind of catch and cook here, especially when we start harvesting some of the fish, we can process them over here in this area and uh, you know, hang out. We can do, you know, coyote hunt on the property. You can deer hunt. So we can do all that stuff here. This is another option for, uh, you know, like a little bit of base camp. And that's what it's all about, it's spreading out a little bit. We got the cabin going on, we got this spot going on, and we got all, all the other out adventures that we've been doing in the, in the area. So, plan to keep on going with that. 
there's some fish activities, bugs on the surface. Mark's saying there's not a lot of fish left, uh, or he's not seen the fish and, uh, when he comes in to feed them. So that's a little bit curious. I'm wondering if maybe there's a, a mink or something that's uh, coming in and attacking them because the water's not super deep. There's not a lot of escape routes for them and they can't go down in deep water as soon as a, a predator comes at them. But uh, maybe we'll have to do a walk around and see later on if we can find any activity or something that's picking them off. There's no obvious signs, there's no fish floating. Anytime we've come, there's no fish floating. And as far as we know, there's not, there might be one turtle left, but not too many. Uh, it's not the big one, we took that guy out. But uh, it'd be hard to see them eating, you know, the 200 or 300 fish that we put in here. So I'm hoping what's happening is they're spreading out throughout the pond because the water's starting to cool off, the algae is dissipating, that they're making use of more of the pond area and they're not relying so much on their fish feed anymore, which certainly could be the case. All right guys, I got all my Walmart gear. I went over this in another video last year and you guys wanted to see me use it. So this time I'm actually gonna use it. We got our big giant Walmart brand tent. This is a Coleman, it's a five man tent. The reason I don't use it anymore is because it's freaking huge. It's uh, nine feet by nine feet. You could never backpack this out anywhere I go nowadays, except for the pond where we can drive right to it. I got my big giant sleeping bag. I've got, well, okay, I cheated. I've got a thermal rest. I'm gonna need this thermal rest tonight. It's an inflatable air mat because it, the ground is so janky. And uh, got another big sleeping bag. You can see just these two items, you could just never fit in a backpack and get anywhere. And then uh, I might be using this one actually. I might swap with Holden because this one is a much better quality sleeping mat. And you can no, see it's one. like you want it. Yeah. yeah, right. It's an inch and a quarter. Whereas the air mat is, well, it's about two inches, but it compresses and then obviously on a not so good surface, it's gonna, it's not gonna work as well. This I think is gonna work better. You don't need a good sleeping mat. I need a good sleeping no, mat. You can see, you could never, ever, 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 ever portage this anywhere. Well, if this is the only thing you brought, you'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> right? No then. And then when you're starting off camping, you use what backpack you have. It's plastic bags, because that's what you got. So that's pots and pans. You bring, uh, we've got uh, plates and forks and knives. You get to bring all those. And uh, you get to bring a mess of fishing tackle. And you just use whatever backpack you have. So this is what I got. We got some Olight flashlights to go along with it for dark. And uh, that's it. And everything kind of, you know, I just fit it in there wherever it could go. Loose pack. When you Walmart camp, you pretty much have to car camp. You're not gonna get, like I said, you're not gonna get far, right? So you got to be able to drive right to it. We've got some other odds and sods. Courtney's going to bring her stuff. She hasn't packed it up yet, but she's coming here after work. So let's get ourselves a little fire ring set up right now um, so that we're ready to cook as soon as she gets here because she's coming here right after work. I need a bit more. Okay, get a couple more. Is it wet? I don't know it's fine. Hi. Courtney's here. Yay. She's done work. Yay. Yay. <laughs> you gotta set up the tent. That's your work next. Okay. I like doing that. I brought food and treats and snacks and goodies and fun stuff. So we cleared out this spot as best we could. It's very lumpy. Okay. And there's lots of sticks sticking up. There we go. That's how you set up a Walmart mansion tent. This thing's freaking huge. Woohoo! There's not a whole ton of birch bark in these neighborhoods, but uh, dry grass will do. I don't like dry grass as a as a tinder, I find it's, it's, a, it's a flash tinder. So as soon as you light it, it just kind of goes and it's done. But uh, if you can combine it with something else or get enough of it, it'll do in a pinch. If you get a lot of dry stuff, it'll work. So you gotta transfer all that heat from the grass to wood. So if you're lucky enough to have a lot of dry wood, it works. Cause the, you know, this being dry flashes up 
and then the wood being dry flashes up. But you got to transfer your from your tinder to your your kindling. Anyway, it's always a balance, but uh, you got to use what you can find. Beauty and luxuries of car camping with Walmart gear, because you can only car camp with Walmart gear. Is that you could bring everything. Like you could bring your whole house if you want. You just park and you dump the whole house out and you fill it into another big house. This thing's nine foot by nine foot. Did I tell you that already? It's huge. <laughs> well, at least we're putting stuff in it so it doesn't go crazy. And no bugs, eh? Yeah, it's not very Ow! comfortable, is it? I told you, you can't <laughs> walk in here. You gotta crawl or something. You gotta put the mats down and then stay on the mat. Why can't, can I stay on this one? No. Well, at least you, you can have my mat. I'm gonna give you the blue, the the green one, the inflatable one. We should stay on this one though when we're setting up. Yeah, sit on that, and then once you have your stuff laid out, it'll be fine. It won't puncture the bottom because right now there's lots of pokey bits down there. We checked the weather forecast. It's not supposed to rain tonight, so we're gonna live on the edge, and we're not gonna put the rain fly on. Oh. So you'll find out tomorrow if we uh, made a bad choice on that one. But it's nice to sleep out in the open air and have that breeze come through, cool you off, and then. Uh, you know, you get to see the stars too in the night, which is brilliant. So since we're doing typical Walmart everything this time, I actually went out and bought some worms. So I paid my four bucks. It's my penalty for not picking them myself. It actually hasn't rained in a while. Well, it's rained and I got lazy and I didn't do it. I was busy with other things. So we're going to split the worms in half and make them go further. Four bucks for 12. Um, the ones I picked before actually, well, they kind of rotted in the fridge. I don't, I don't know why. I've not been storing them very well lately. So we're just going to use a half a worm. So that means instead of 12 worms, I'm going to have 24 worms. So we're going to extend it a little bit. I'm hoping I can catch something other than a bass. <laughs> this is like this is the pond most likely where you're most likely to catch a bass in. But I would like to catch a trout. I know they're not full size yet. But I don't really care because it seems like something else is actually eating them. So we got the fire all ready to go, but we're not going to light it yet. We're hoping the wind dies down because the wind is actually blowing straight toward our tent. So any fire we make is going to go blow that way. We actually moved the whole fire closer to the water and away from the tent. Uh, we don't want the fire to be too close to the tent. It will just burn or if worse, it's going to put little ember, ember burns in it, which leaves, um, you know, room for mosquitoes and bugs to get in, which you don't want. Courtney brought typical camp foods. So we're not like, you know, this is, this is glamping, sort of, sort of glamping, minus the really crappy tent pad. So we got hot dogs and marshmallows and chips and everything. I'm going to show you guys some of the, the chips that we have, which are always, I think, anyway, we find, our family finds it interesting when you go travel and you go to another place with different varieties of chips. So, or crisps, if you're in the UK. So we'll show you that a little bit later. But I might go for a little troll here and uh, see if I can't catch a fish to eat. I couldn't find my $5 fry pan, which I got on sale from Walmart. Uh, the handle melted off of it because I used to use it for this type of thing. It just burnt off because it's not meant for fire cooking. My Pelican brand kayak. It's uh, super durable, which I like because I'm just dragging it on the rocks here. That's all we got, rocks. We're always talking about how to improve this pond. One of the ideas we have is to actually dig it out again, which is necessary, obviously, for the state of this thing. It needs to be about 15 feet deep in the middle. 15 feet deep somewhere. Well, I guess that would make it the middle. Those minnows are doing well, if in case you're curious. They're actually getting pretty big. Probably because they moved out from the creek, now they can kind of get big. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to catch a trout here, but I don't know. Let's see what we can do. See, I'm not really sure why I'm fishing from the kayak. I could probably just as easily fish from the shore and probably have better luck. Oh, there's some big fish down in there. There's one one just came up there. I'd be thrilled if I can catch a fish. So I don't know how many fish are left here, to be honest. There's another one. There's some trout in here. Seems like just the bigger ones. The small ones, I think, can hide. I think that's the whole thing. But, uh, the aerator is not working currently because there's a cloud, but it was working pretty good. Got some underwater footage of that last time I was out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You can see the tent all the way from over here spin around and show you guys. So I should probably just fish from shore, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> this is like kid fun, right? 
So what would you do if I caught a fish like on the first cast? Would you guys flip out? Oh, and the first cast was a bad cast, so it's probably not gonna happen. Let's get back in here and try that again. I was looped around the front of my rod. I still kind of looped, aren't I? It's happening. All right, let's jig it, jig it, jig it, jig it. Oh, it's a little bass. We don't want the bass. Get out of there. Sure enough, the bass goes in for it. Oh, another bass is in there. Oh no, I caught a stupid bass. I didn't want to catch a bass. You guys are uh, wondering about these, the bass situation here. Well, the reason, the reason that we don't want this to be a bass uh, pond anymore is because the uh, bass are stunted. I mean, this is like a two or three year old fish and it's tiny. So it's no good for nothing. We just don't, we don't, it does, it just, it's not productive. It's not a productive bass operation here. I don't know if you guys can tell, but all that algae is gone completely. Like we cleaned that up with the, uh, the dugout dude sent us a aerator, dugoutdude.ca, and there's like no algae left on this pond, none. It's been an interesting experiment. I mean, guys, I'm glad you guys have followed through on it and you guys are getting a kick out of it because we're getting a kick out of it too. Not seeing a lot of bass here either, you know? Oh, that was a trout. Like he came up and looked at it two, for two seconds and then he left. I mean, it could be that the, the trout are just hanging out. Oh, there's a, that's a trout. Oh, oh, and he let it go. Shoot. No, he's still there. There we go. That's a big one. Oh my God, that's a big one. Big trout, big trout, big trout, big trout, big trout, big trout, big trout. That's dinner if we get a landed. Oh, oh, big trout. Oh, I gotta get this guy up. Oh, we got him. We got the guy. We got him. 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 That is a big monster trout. Whoa, dude. Whew. Oh. Oh. oh, there's got so much strength in them. Oh, that's a beauty trout. That is an absolute beautiful, beautiful trout. Oh man, that is a beautiful, beautiful trout. That is dinner. Dinner, dinner, dinner. Let's give this, oh shoot, he's still moving. That's not good. Not good. Don't go back in the drink, dude. Why are you still moving? Oh, why are you still alive? I think I'm just putting oxygen back in his lungs. Ha, huh, his gills, I mean, <laughs> lungs. Beauty fish, dude. Sweet, sweet fish. Now, if you guys are wondering why we're doing that, that's it right there, man. Just to be able to have it all set up like that and be able to catch a fish. Beautiful. Water's clearing up too. It's, it's looking a lot better than it was. Nice and cold. All right, now we get to go back to camp <laughs> and uh, eat a fish. Beautiful. Grab our fish here and we can make our way back to the family. There's a, a well here, but I'm not gonna put him in it. Here we go, we're back to camp. Back to camp with our trophy trout. Pretty simple way to keep fish. Just got a little bit of paracord here. And all I'm gonna do is, I don't know if nature intended it this way, but they actually made a really sweet spot where you can put the uh, rope through the gills like this. You can actually do this with a stick too. So it doesn't have to be like paracord, but I have it handy. And then all I'm gonna do is take this and toss it in the water. And the water's cool enough that uh, it's not gonna spoil right away because we wanna get that fire burnt down a little bit. So we'll just, uh, we'll just throw a rock on top of the cord here like that, and that'll keep it from going anywhere. And aside from that, we gotta watch out for turtles though. So we will have to make sure it's tied off actually better than I thought, <laughs> initially thought. The turtle will come up and try to grab that. So I think one of the most interesting parts about that is I, well, first of all, I spent four bucks on a dozen worms. But the second part is I actually used half a worm. <laughs> so I only needed half a worm. So maybe I'll take it back and uh, get a refund on that. <laughs> anyway, let's light this fire up and uh, get things cooking. And uh, we're making a, a big wall at the back so that the embers that do scoop up because the wind's blowing toward us will actually get caught on the back rocks instead of blowing right into the tent. 
All right, so we got the stomach here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check to see if the fish are actually eating anything other than their fish pellets. It's always an interesting experiment. You should do this with wild fish too. You can figure out what they're eating. Uh, yeah, <laughs> those are fish pellets. <laughs> All fish pellets so far, fish pellets. And then uh, the stomach is over here. So that'll give us a more immediate idea of what they're eating like within the last couple of days and that's uh oh there's an insect there you can see those legs it actually ate an insect good for you although you learned a little too late because <laughs> now you're dinner yeah so those are little bug legs so it's been eating some kind of bug i don't see any oh there's a full fuller body bug some kind of bug there's a no oh, that's the it's a liver i think so there you go, it's actually been eating things other than pellet feed, which is good. Um, so they're learning, although very slowly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this in the water and we're gonna check back to see if a turtle eats it. Maybe we'll, I think probably first thing in the middle of the night, we're gonna hear this get taken. All right, dude, wanna race? Race? Is that your dinner? Sure. <laughs> what do you mean, sure, you wanna hear this? Mm, no. Why not? All right, so hot dogs are actually a treat for him. That he only gets to eat when we go camping. Number one. So, all right, so we're gonna what? race. Ra race what? First person to get their food on their stick wins. Oh, what? No fair. <laughs> oh, I don't. Golden strategy okay. isn't very good. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> cheating. How is it cheating? That's cheating. How? Because you're supposed to put it on, thread it on there. It's on. Cheating. All right, so that's how you put a hot dog on a stick. This is how you put a fish on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Looks so weird. Looks weird, doesn't it? Okay, so that's threaded all up there. You're threaded all up there. Uh, I'm not gonna race can I you. Can get two? Uh, well, I didn't know how you're gonna put them on. I didn't know how you're gonna put two on there. Yeah, you can put two on there. Easy peasy. Race so we're not gonna race as far as who's gonna cook their food first, because this is gonna take probably all night. We're gonna be eating <laughs> this one in the dark. It's got to slow cook it. But it's gonna be so much better than that piece of. It's not a piece of junk. It's a piece of junk. Lips and. Emails. Lips and boom, boom, boom. <laughs> All right. Do you see the turtle? It's coming. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I scared it. Oops. He'll be back. It's funny how he didn't just grab it, eh? It was so close. Of course, the fish is gonna get the Wadobo treatment available at FowlersMakeryMischief.com. Uh, when you guys buy this stuff, you're supporting the channel. I can't rely on YouTube for their advertising anymore and recommending my content. They just, they simply won't. As a matter of fact, if you want to get notified now, um, go to thewoodedbeardsman.com, which is actually my website. And uh, there's a newsletter drop-in, so you can put your name into a name and email and then we'll no we'll actually notify you instead of having to rely on youtube to notify you we will notify you so you put your name in and we'll send it out on every new release turn your dogs you're gonna burn your dogs i already burnt them dude you're a terrible chef look at that turning on its why i think those are done actually they are oh, i think oh. so <laughs> sorry no that side is it <laughs> That's why you've got to thread them, genius. <laughs> you got spinny dogs that keep getting burnt on one side. There. Hopefully that one will be fine. Oh well, live and learn. I don't mind burnt ones. Those are mine. Okay, mom, you can have them. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to put my hot dog together. <laughs> <laughs> How do you put a hot dog together? Like this. Yeah, and then what? <laughs> Using bread? Yeah. Dude, brutal. Well, you're eating a fish. That's more brutal. Is it? Probably. Who puts ketchup on a hot dog? Everyone. Probably everyone who's watching this right now puts ketchup on their hot dogs. No, that's weird. It's not. <laughs> Why is the fly in the tent? Because it started raining. 
No, my fish isn't done. We threw everything in here, got the tarp on, and the rain fly on anyway. This is why you don't get a Walmart brand tent. Well, you get a Walmart brand tent if that's all you can afford, but the zippers on here, like, doesn't work. <laughs> partly because of how we set it up, but partly because it's just a bad design. So I actually took a knife to it and I cut this little flap off because it, you know, the zipper wants to ride into it. So when you do buy cheaper end things, you pretty much get what you pay for it, for the most part. I mean, a tent, you're usually paying for like lighter quality or lighter quality, lighter weight tent and size and bulk. So you're actually paying for less material when you buy a more expensive tent. 10 more days, dude, 10 more days. Season's open. <laughs> you're stuck there. You're really stuck. The, the only way this duck can escape from the pond is to fly up this way. Literally the season opens in 10 days. I have that duck for dinner. The bottom here is probably almost cooked. It's getting really, 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 really close. Everyone knows when you go camping, you have to pack some chips. And um, I picked up Chris's favorites, dill pickle and ketchup. Um, Canadian flavors? I don't know if they can get them everywhere in the States. Anyway, um, I think maybe ketchup is a Canadian flavor. But, and then this time of year, no matter where you live, they always have limited edition flavors. So today I found cheesy garlic bread and onion rings. So we're gonna give those a try. The limited edition flavors are never awesome, but worth a try <laughs> anyway. That's why they don't stick around for very long, I guess. But I'm always up for trying something new. I like ketchup chips. These are probably my favorite out of all of them, except maybe I will like one of those better. But yeah, ketchup is the best. Holden wanted to try these ones first, cheesy garlic bread. I'm curious too, although my guess is they'll just taste like all other cheesy chips, which are not my favorite. But again, worth a try. Ooh, it smells good. Like garlic bread, maybe? Yeah. Kind of. Oh, I like them. Do you really? It actually does taste like garlic bread. They're okay. I like bread and fish. No, fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. It tastes like salmon. It's got big, big flakes of skin or big flakes of meat like salmon. Got that kind of pinky, whitey pinky. Hot. That one dobo is really good. The fish is good too. We got some super, super, super crazy wildlife down here. You see that? You see that little red thing? There's a red thing, and then there's a. You think it's just like. It's actually a real thing. There's another. What the heck is that? That's the weirdest thing, man. And I don't know. You guys see all those little bugs? What is that red thing? Do you guys know what that is? I'm gonna get a disease now. <laughs> what is that? Don't bite, <laughs> Don't bite me. <laughs> all right, I'm letting it back in. <laughs> <laughs> and look at all the little tiny, 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 tiny bugs. It's, it's eating the black things. Is it eating them? Yeah, it looks like it. Like, look at those things. They're little tiny specks, no bigger than a. Uh, Piece of pepper. It's like a crumb. Yeah, it looks like a like a spider, kind of. Weird. The red things are like attacking the gray things. 
Gotta get the worm, get the worm. It's like a dinosaur like that. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that worm is gone. <gasps> One for the head. He's like slurping it like a piece of spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Except a really gross piece of spaghetti. Somehow he ended up at the most comfortable spot. I had to swap out for uh, his for sleep mat. mat. But the <laughs> mat's better. He thinks the mat's better. But uh, I think you need more padding for the, uh, the weight. So I've got the inflatable one. He's got the hard surface. Or it the... feels like my own bed except <laughs> warmer and it's not that great. You're downplaying it now because he thinks we're going to kick him out of that spot too. You are. <laughs> you are. It's lumpy. Courtney, lumpy? Yep. Yep, just like your own bed at home? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, we're going to get it through this night, everybody? Yes? Yes. Okay, I guess so. <laughs> You're not tricking anybody. Okay. Best sleep of your life. Yeah. I no, no. He well, says can, it's comfy, I can't comfy. can't see anything because the light's up there. If yeah. you move the light, we'll be able to stargaze. Yeah, we took the top clouds. back. We took the top back off because uh, it's not supposed to rain it's anymore. It's 10%. 10%. That's, it, it's a chance. It's a small one. Yeah. You can go cover it up in the middle of the night if it starts raining. No. Yep. Why? It's your idea. Excuse me. Did you fart? No. Then don't excuse yourself. All right, good night. Morning. Morning. How did you sleep? Fine. Good? Yeah. You sleep the best? Probably. Probably. You sleep good? Nope. <laughs> all right. I slept all right. I didn't hear any too weird noises. Too weird of noises. I heard one sounded like maybe a rabbit came up over here to the side of the tent and then freaked out and ran away. And then I heard a duck, like a duck that's hanging out over here in the corner a bunch of times. And he, I think he just crawls up in the woods. I don't know, maybe he can't fly anymore and he's stuck here. So like he sneaks off and hides when people are looking. There's a trout or a, that's a trout. There's a bunch of little bass in here now cruising around. Still tons of bass in here. And that turtle was hanging out here pretty much all night. What's going on, kids? Packing up? Yes. What are you doing? I'm playing golf. You're not packing up. Pack up. No. You gonna stay here all day? I'll let you guys do the work. <laughs> you can have more fun. I'm gonna grab some fish feed um, that we have on hand and we'll toss it out over on the other side. Because uh, the wind hasn't picked up yet. It'll give us a good idea about how many fish there actually are in the pond. And I want to talk to you guys about something. Because, well, when I was sleeping, and over the course of yesterday, I kind of had a good idea. Well, I think it's a good idea. Well, it's an idea. It's an idea. I'm going to let you guys decide whether you think it's a good one or not. There's quite a few trout there. There's quite a few trout, which is actually... Good. We'll grab some of our feed here and we'll see what kind of activity we get out of them. Yeah, they're there. They're all under the surface though. You guys are seeing that, but they're hungry. There's that's a boot. There's a there's a good hundred there. Well seeing that makes me feel a lot better. I mean I was pretty worried yesterday when I wasn't seeing any fish, but it's hard to see the fish now. They're they're like they've almost changed the same color as the water, so they're kind of like gray now. So if there's any kind of turbulence on the water at all, um, wind or whatever, you can't see them. It got really hot, and that was before we had the aerator, and so they could have died. Um, but you would think, you guys would think probably that if they had died, they would float, right? Um, although Clark spent sunk uh, initially, so maybe after a while he would bloat and float. Um, and then we'd see them, like somebody would see them. Somebody would see a couple hundred fish floating around, right? Um, they could have been picked off. 
I'm thinking maybe like, uh, you know, some kind of predator mink might come in there and destroy them because they, they have a hard time hiding. The, the water is really low. So what I want to ask you guys is if you if you would be interested, we, we got um, a bead on a, a 40 foot uh, boom uh, scoop uh, excavator. So <laughs> 40 feet, like compared to the last one, they can go a lot deeper. Problem is it's 15, it's 1300 bucks per day just to rent. Um, and then $500 a, a gas a day, probably. Um, last time we dug, it was $700 float uh, plus I spent $500 on gas. That was from the, the last sponsor. And you know, Linden Trout Farm put the, the trout in and then we got the dugout dude to supply the oxygen. So that was taken care of. What I'm basically asking if you guys would crowdfund this, if you'd be interested in running it this next year and we do a massive dig. Um, and you could donate whatever you wanted and we could dig as long as we have money to, to dig. So we could do a $5,000 dig or a $10,000 dig, depending on what you guys put in. Um, I think $5,000 is probably the minimum to get anywhere as far as just get it, bring the machine in 700 bucks and then a five day dig. Um, but to get the boom in here, we can go a lot deeper and bigger. So let's spin you around here. This whole area could be dug out, this entire area, all the way back. You see that gravel where it's sitting on here, all the way back to that pile? That can be dug all clear out. Like we could make this pond at least an acre or two just in this little spot here and 15 foot deep drop anyway that's my idea that's an idea for you guys you guys leave leave the comments down below if you want to do it what do you think dude you want to camp here again mm, yeah i guess so <laughs> it's like whatever sure well maybe if we could clear it out a bit more yeah it's a little bumpy no but no. for you guys for us, yeah because you're complaining